As we begin our service this morning, listen to these words. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love, who satisfies you with good as long as you live. Bless the Lord, all his host, his servants that do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Amen. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Dear Father, you are the creator of the universe and everything in it. And yet, being all powerful, you're all loving and merciful and gracious. So we humbly come to you in this time of uncertainty and concern as a, a new and very unique school year begins. And, and we implore you, Father, that your Holy Spirit this year will hover over every school, every classroom, every school library and science lab and school cafeteria and gymnasium and athletic field and distance learning and homeschool situations and including our Sunday school and Wednesday night classes where we teach and show Jesus to youngsters. Oh, we long for them to resume soon. And we ask that you bring safety and good health and wisdom to everyone, students, parents, grandparents, teachers, administrators, and all others involved in the school activities. And dear God, we ask for peace. The peace that, that, that passes over our human understanding as we encounter the challenges that we now face. We certainly pray that all students gain proficiency in academics, but more importantly, because we know that you more often than not bring gracious blessing through challenge. We ask that everyone, all of us, gain a deeper knowledge of you and a greater trust in you as we continually grow in faith and commitment to serving others. We thank you, Father, for all blessings for all answered prayers which come because of the one through whom we pray, Emmanuel, God with us, our blessed Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Romans 8, 35-39 Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or are hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. 
Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Gracious Father, we come to you now seeking your wisdom as we select new shepherds among us. We believe and know through the eyes of faith that you are not surprised by our circumstances. You are not surprised or alarmed by the fact that we haven't met together for several months now and that our situation is different. Even now you are working among us, even though we haven't seen each other face to face, you are working among us. And Father, we believe that you are raising up new shepherds among us. And so, Father, we ask that you would give us the eyes to see the brothers and sisters that you have called, uh, the ones with humble hearts and, and, and are servant leaders, the ones who will make wise decisions by listening in, to your voice and following, the ones that know and love the sheep and uh, t- comfort the broken heart and to defend and protect uh, those that need care. Father, we are, we are looking for the ones that um, are your representatives in our city and wherever they have a sphere of influence, that they are known for being your people. And, and Father, we know that none of us are perfect and we, uh, we are not praying for perfect leaders, but we would pay, pray for those who um, would understand your grace and your love and your mercy for themselves and be willing and able to show that same love and grace and mercy to others. And so, Father, um, we also know that you are the chief shepherd and that the, that the people that, that lead are just the under-shepherds that listen to the chief shepherd's voice, as our, our brother Peter wrote. And so, Father, I pray that you would give those that are good listeners that can hear your voice and they can, they can uh, lead the rest of the sheep. So, Father, give us the eyes to see who you are raising up. Uh, Give us the best people that you would have us in this unique time. Um, And I pray, Father, that we would have the courage to acknowledge what you're doing with joy, uh, who you're calling among us. Help us to to be able to together uh, recognize who those people are. And again, Father, we just thank you for your guidance and your leadership and your spirit who, who leads us step by step. And uh, we, we rely upon you in, in this time. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Dear God, we come together to pray about what we should do as a church, how we should know what to do as a church about reopening. We confess that we've got feelings that we don't understand this time of being alone and being away from each other has changed the way we feel. Not about each other, but feelings that we have inside. Father, we've had to deal with loneliness and fear and guilt. Many things that we were able to do for each other and with each other were things that are important to us. And now that we haven't had them and can't do them, we feel guilty. Father, help us to escape from that so that guilt does not keep us from being what we need to be. It does not keep us from you. It does not build any walls that shouldn't be there. Father, we pray for the loneliness that we felt. Father, we pray for others that have been truly alone. Their house is empty, their rooms are empty, and they've been alone during these months. Father, I pray that we would be able to talk to them, to help them to know what they need. So help us in that way, Father. As a congregation, help us to learn. As schools have opened and universities have opened and events are beginning to come together, 
uh, help us to know what it's like, what's good to do, and what is dangerous. Father, help us to keep safe. Help us to know how that we can bless each other and overcome this time of loneliness. Father, we beseech you. We can't turn to the experts because there's too many and they have different ideas. So we listen to one idea and then the next day we hear the opposite. We don't, uh, we don't know what to do. We don't know what the facts are. Father, we need to uh, take one day at a time and one step at a time and lean on you and pray for you to make good and selfless decisions for the good of others. This is our prayer. Thank you, God, for listening. Be with us as we decide about how to be together again. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I will give you thanks, O Lord, with all my heart. I will sing your praises before the gods. I bow before your holy temple as I worship. I praise your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness, for your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. As soon as I pray, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me strength. Every king in all the earth will thank you, Lord, for all of them will hear your words. Yes, they will sing about the Lord's ways, for the glory of the Lord is very great. Though the Lord is great, he cares for the humble, but he keeps his distance from the proud. Though I am surrounded by troubles, you will protect me from the anger of my enemies. You reach, you reach out your hand, and the power of your right hand saves me. The Lord will work out his plans for my life, for your faithful love, O Lord, endures forever. Don't abandon me, for you made me. We have been separated from our neighborhood for five months. Our neighborhoods have experienced isolation due to COVID-19. Our Vandaya community has also experienced the pain of separation from our Wednesday night program with the loss of students from the COVID-19. We have not heard the sounds of our children and we have not seen the smiles and hurts they are undergoing. We do not see the brokenness perhaps they are undergoing in their homes. Our streets are empty and the sound of children playing, riding bicycles and chasing one another is absence. Sometimes when we look back on the direction that we are looking at a few months ago regarding our Wednesday night program, and wondering which steps we must take to evaluate our program, the answer may have been given to us as a result of the COVID-19 outbreak. Both the neighborhood, children, and the Vandea community need each other. Father, we continue to seek your wisdom that your presence may be with us. May we look at others as though, through your eyes, less judging, more loving, and seeing them like us, not as perfect or finished, but as a work in progress that will be completely in due time by your hands. Help us to help those who are struggling through this day in our neighborhood, where we see a need rather than walk away. May we stop a while and share a hand and a listening ear a smile, a prayer, compassion, love, just as you would do. Father, we pray for members in our neighborhood. Vicente and Lupe, manager of the apartments in our neighborhood, pray that you will bless them and give them wisdom and judgment as they help people move in the neighborhood. We continue to lift up our prayers for Danny and Cecilia Caruvio, who have been our good neighbors, and pray that you continue to bless her health. Bless Olivia Rodriguez, our neighbor, who is always kind to our community. We would pray for the Williams family, our next-door neighbors also. Joe and Crystal Rodriguez, 
the Benitez Rodriguez family, where one of our Wednesday night students has come, whose name is Matthias. We pray for this Strada family looking for work and pray that their work will be uh, successful in locating a job. We continue for another Rodriguez family who are still working and pray for the protection of their children and their family. All that we have, we offer, Lord, to you. We offer you our hands that you might use them in and through our daily work. We offer you our feet that you may lead them to someone who needs our help. We offer you these shoulders if you would should they help enlighten another's load. We offer you this voice that you may use it to speak for those in need. All we are and that we have, we offer to you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. This is Cindy Johnston. I'm going to start this morning by reading from Mark chapter 14, verses 22 to 24. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is the blood of my covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Like many of you, I grew up in the Church of Christ, and the way we practiced the Lord's Supper, communion, seemed very normal and right and the only way to do it. Of course, we had communion every Sunday, and if you missed it on Sunday morning, you took it at the Sunday evening service. And this, of course, is only if you'd been baptized. As kids, we never touched the communion bread or juice. Much later in my life, I found myself at a church other than a Church of Christ for communion. At two times, once in an Anglican church in Denver, and once an Episcopal church in Albuquerque for a Christmas Eve midnight service. We went to the front of the building where someone handed me a piece of bread, looked in my eyes, and said, Christ's body, broken for you, and then offered a cup one cup of wine, real wine, and looked me in the eye and said, Christ's blood given for you. Wow. This was unexpected, and it seemed a very personal and intimate way to receive the Lord's Supper. It somehow shifted my perspective on this remembrance that I had participated in for most of my life. Now, Sherry, don't get any ideas. I don't think I could do this at the front of the auditorium without bursting into tears. So, so recently, I heard a believer from a different tradition say that the bread and the wine of the Lord's Supper are something that is always meant to be given and received and shared and not something that is taken in a communion service. They think it's odd that we simply break off and pick up a piece of cracker by ourselves. The thought is that we give it to and receive it from our fellow believers as part of our communion with each other. So the word communion comes from the same root word that the words communicate and community come from. By definition, it takes more than one person. Of course, ultimately, the giving was done by Jesus when he gave his body and blood for us to receive. It isn't something that we could take or earn on our own. I think that words, language, shape how we're able to think about concepts. So I encourage you today to receive this, the Lord's Supper, the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you.
the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me in paths beside? beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. For you, even, are, though. even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You repair a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Your, my cup overflows. Surely. Sh- surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, good job, Marco. But it's your turn. Um, the Lord? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me? He leads me beside still waters. He restores? He restores my soul. He leads me in paths? He will lead me in paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. For name's his name's sake. Even though? Even though I walk through the valley of death. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. For? For you're with me. Your rod? Your rod my staff. They comfort me? They comfort me. You prepare a table? You prepare a table before me. In the presence? In the presence of my enemies. You anoint? You anoint my head with oil. My cup? My cup overflows. Surely? Surely, goodness. And mercy shall follow me in the days of my life. And? And? I will dwell. I will dwell the Lord. I will dwell in the house. I will dwell in the house of my Lord. Forever. Forever. Please join me in prayer. Father, we're mindful of many in our number that are hurting or sick. Uh, suffering in some way, um, struggling. We we ask that you would be with uh, each of these that are on our prayer list. Um, Amy and Kristen Ryder, Sarah and Danny Clark, Dean, John and Audrey, Jennifer Burt, her family, Karen Smitherman, Chris and Megan Marshall, Felicia, Matthew and Charlotte Patty, Lisa Drake, Hazel Lamont, Celia, Rochelle Smith, Shanae and Amari, Mildred Cox, Hazel Rudder, Glenn and Joy Johnson. Each of these uh, have been on our our list for some time in in various uh, issues that they're having to deal with some very long term and uh, that alone make it can make it very uh, difficult we ask that you would help us to be able to reach out see ways that we can reach out and uh, be a comfort um, be a presence that uh, they can know that they're loved and that they're cared for um, there are there are uh, other issues that we're concerned with, that not just of our number, but kids trying to go back to school and teachers trying to teach and the uh, special difficulty that uh, that poses this time around. Um, and those that are struggling from... Um, lack of work and and not having the same uh, income that they had, same opportunities for work. Um, we we pray that you would would make a difference in their lives and help us to be your hands in in that effort. We ask that you would. Um, in, in everything that we do, that we would be mindful of others and not take things for granted. 
We are thankful for the blessings. We are blessed in so many ways. The love that we have for each other, that you have for us, the people that you put in our lives, um, we are thankful. Be with us now as we continue to worship. In Christ's name, 